Welcome to the Sports Show. I'm Andy Marks. And I'm Byron Saucer. Well, we're here early in the week again to wrap up last Friday night's ask- action. Uh, let me ask you a question. Let's uh, pretend it's 2007 and I asked you which two teams in Marion County were going to start off 2009 undefeated. What would you have said? I would have said like we're an OCA. Of course you would have. <laughs> uh, really, props to both of those programs because uh, there's some good football being played in this county and for them to be the two teams that are still unbeaten is an accomplishment and uh, Lake Weir in particular uh, it hasn't really been easy for them they've had some uh, struggles but uh, you were out there last Friday and uh, first 3-0 start in the uh, 42 years of Lake Weir football yeah I mean uh, yes one milestone after another under Hennerton out there last year of course first trip to the playoffs uh Last Friday night, as you mentioned, first 3-0 and start ever. First two-game win streak against Vanguard. Uh, and it was uh, it was quite the track meet, 45-42. It looked like it was going to be one of those games that Lake Weir was clearly better than Vanguard. Uh, and we're still going to lose, quite frankly. And, yeah. and I think Mark Hennethan and everybody else uh, out at the stadium kind of had that same twinge of doubt, too. But uh, they got it done, and Tracy Curry... Uh, was the guy once again. I mean, a nice supporting cast, don't get me wrong, the Jenkins kid and O'Neill at running back, very good. Uh, at one time, they even came out in the third quarter there and simplified, went to the power eye and really just uh, banged it down Vanguard's throat. But P.J. Williams had two kick returns for touchdowns, and they had a couple of big uh, scoring strikes. Uh, Lake Weir went for it on a fourth and one at their own 30. There were all these little spots where you said, all right, that's the play that's going to get them beat. No, that'll be the play that gets them beat. But they got it done, and, uh, you know, like I say, you just got to tip your hat. Great start. So let me ask you about Vanguard. Uh, they, they didn't win this game. The Knights are 1-2 and two now coming off of an 0-10 year. What did they show you? Are they back? Well, I mean, they, they showed me they're very athletic, very fast, and uh, Alex Castaneda will have them back. I mean, you can see it, you know, uh, the foundation's starting to get there, you know what I mean? They're, they're starting to build, and, and they're just not, they don't have the depth. They had a couple of injuries, and, and as kids got winded, as the game wore on, uh, you know, Lake Weir kind of really took control. But, yeah, Vanguard's going to be okay. Uh, I, I would say five, six wins is, is certainly within their grasp this year uh, with a difficult schedule. So we'll see how that goes. Certainly next year I would look for some big things from Vanguard. Okay, well, then let's go, go on quickly to the other unbeaten. Neither one of us were there. But the uh, Crusaders of OCA, uh, a blowout win, frankly, 41-7 to over McLaughlin. Yeah, I mean, these are my guys. You know that. These, the, this is a 10-0 team right here, and uh, I think they got a real shot at the FCC crown. And I really think uh, maybe, of course, you know, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't say it this way, but maybe more importantly, this is it's another step for OCA where they can kind of start playing some of these county schools other than just St. John and maybe compete. So we'll see. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun to watch those guys come up over there. Yeah, you got to start somewhere, and they are starting this process by blowing out everybody they seem to be seeing this year. Yeah. So my game was uh, was just about as exciting as yours, I think. I was over at Ned Love Field in Donellan. Uh, big cross-county rivalry between North Marion and Donellan. It's no longer a district game, uh, but the, the same old story kind of happened, which is Donellan was right there knocking at the door, yeah. but, uh, but didn't get it done. It was an exciting game, and I'll tell you what, Donellan's running back, Bubba Black, Everybody knows his name because this is his third year in a row putting up monster numbers. Uh, He's playing against top-notch athletes over there at North Marion, and he was unstoppable, really fast. He had just an incredible run there at the goal line with with, uh, just under two minutes left. He he probably had to get through eight defenders to get to the court of the end zone. He did it. It looked like a score that was going to send the game to overtime until Chucky Looney led North Marion on a really, really impressive drive that took about 70 seconds and, uh, and finish with Matt Pringle scoring from one yard out. That gave the Colts a 21-14 win. Uh, let me tell you, North Marion seems to like uh, playing close games. We've learned that so Absolutely, far this year. Yeah. Yeah, uh, two, string, two things strike me about this game. Uh, number one is Chucky Looney's getting it done again. This kid looks like a completely different kid. Uh, not that he wasn't very good as a sophomore and junior, but really a uh, senior leader this year. Got a live arm. I don't know how he looked Friday. I saw him the two, two weeks prior. Can really throw on the, on the run with, uh, with some authority. Mm-hmm. And, and I wasn't sure about his arm strength until this year. He looked very good. And, and the other is scheduling tough teams early. You wonder if that didn't help North Marion down the stretch. You know what I mean? Having been in these tight games with a St. Augustine and a Forest as opposed to Donnell and having 50-point wins, you know, over the Lacantos of the world. Uh, 
So I don't know. Maybe that was maybe that was the difference. But as you say, it's always a great game. Uh, both teams always learn a lot about themselves, and uh, I look for both of them to be uh, postseason this year. I agree with you about Chucky Looney and his arm and making some big throws. It definitely happened, which reminds me that Donellan has a quarterback with that kind of arm this year also. Cody Underwood, this is a big kid. He had a seven-yard running touchdown where he lowered his shoulder and uh, got physical and got across the goal line. And he also made some big throws, and unfortunately – those throws were not caught at the other end. There were a couple of touchdown passes that were a little too hot for some of Donellan's receivers to handle. But uh, this is a big-time quarterback. Cody Underwood is good. Donellan has the ingredients in place to have a big year. And then over on the North Marion side, we taught, you know, I, I've mentioned before this sort of thunder and lightning cliche when it comes to their running backs. They've got the bruisers in Richardson and Pringle, and then the fast kid in Gilmore. But Gilmore had 125 yards against Donellan, two touchdowns. They were tough yards. This is not just some little fleet-footed guy that avoids contact. He can run, and he can run hard. So a uh, lot of offensive weapons in this game. It was a fun game. Good, hard-nosed Friday night football in Marion County. Glad I was there. So let's move on. We had a few other games happen. Uh, Forrest, a big blowout win over Westport High School. The Wildcats seem to be uh, uh, maybe getting uh, getting gelled together, heading towards their district schedule. What are you expecting out of them? Well, they needed this one. Yeah. I mean, there's no question. They really needed this one just from a confidence standpoint. A lot of guys learning new positions had to fill in with injured starters ahead of them. I mean, it's a good sign. I think they played two tough teams early, played them tough. Uh, they haven't spit the bit, and I think that's the thing that uh, David Hodges had to worry about out there. He's got his team ready, and, and I think they can compete in that 6A uh, district. I don't know how tough it is, but uh, I look for them to, to hang around. Yeah, Westport is, uh, is in a bad place right now. That's a game where Forrest needed to have a blowout win. Did their job. They got it done. So congratulations to them. Also, congratulations to the Bellevue Rattlers who got in the win column. They were losing most of this game. Yeah, uh, honestly, uh, you know, we talk about Forrest needing one. I really think if Bellevue doesn't get one against Wildwood, the season just completely gets away with them. So kudos to those guys for uh, knuckling down out there and getting it done. Yeah, and uh, Trinity Catholic, uh, some question marks there. We aren't used to uh, wondering what's wrong at Trinity. I think we're wondering a little bit. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, you know, tough tough early season uh, schedule for sure. But, uh, you know, the, the quarterback situation has been something we've, we've had an eye on from the get-go. Uh, it looks like it's the Crow kids' uh, spot to lose. Uh, seven picks in the last two games. Now, they did beat Vanguard, but four picks against Tampa Catholic. You just can't turn it over that many times against a good team. Uh, I am impressed with the defense. They look to be coming along a little bit. To hold Tampa Catholic to 17 points, I think, is a step forward. I think these guys will be okay. they got Newberry coming this Friday. they got to handle their business in the district. If they do that, they should continue to get better a little bit each week, and I think they'll be all right. Yeah, and, and I think people over there at Trinity may want to remind themselves, this is a young kid who hasn't been a starting quarterback Certainly. before, and, he, and, and Trinity is not losing to Patsy's. These are big-time opponents they're facing. Gainesville, Tampa Catholic, these are, you know, Two state semifinals teams. type yeah, of teams. Sure. Very, very, very good football. Trinity is in these games, and, uh, and it's a process getting a quarterback ready to compete at that level, and, and this kid seems to have all the tools. So uh, let's stick with them and see what happens. Well, and frankly, I think you can learn more about yourself and what you need to do in these types of games rather than beating, you know, Chiefland 50 to 7. Right, right. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see if it pays off in the long run. And finally, we had a, a, a tough one for St. John, although the, in their defense they're playing a uh, undefeated team and seem to play them pretty well. Uh, maybe a struggle over there this year, but uh, I think they're showing a little more life than we were expecting. Yeah, I think they fit nicely in the conference they're in, the Sunshine uh, State Conference there. I think that's where they uh, that's where they belong, and I think they'll be competitive. Uh, tough one. I thought they did. I thought they played well at home. So. All right, so we'll see you later on this week in the sports show. We'll be back to talk about who picked what successfully over the week and talk about this weekend's games.